Dear students, and welcome to the um, presentation for the Hauptseminar Kommunikationssysteme. Um, I will do this talk in English because we have a similar one in German for Comnets 1. If you're interested in the German version, maybe a little bit shorter, but there is a German version as well. I would like to welcome everybody. Um, I have the pleasure now in the next 30 minutes to explain a little bit our chair, our activities in teaching and in research. And maybe you get interested to maybe do your student or your master thesis with us in the future. So um, I would like to start with the history of um, our chair. Um, it's called the Deutsche Telekom Chair for Communication Networks. And um, we are placed in the Barkhausenbau. So whenever you would like to um, visit us, we have a web page where you can find the um, address. Um, you can even follow us on Twitter. Right, and um, if you want to visit us physically, we are in the Backhausenbau first floor, and my office is um, Roman 133. Um, here, the Comnets uh, members, um, a lot of young people doing the research here, doing their PhD, their postdoc, and um, from different nations. I will tell you a little bit about this in a minute. So, um, as you can see, 64 employees, 18 nations, 25% um, female researchers, which could be more. Um, but currently um, we are 25%. If you look in our um, impact, we have over 500 uh, publications. We are responsible for 11 lectures. Some of them I will introduce um, to you in a minute. And um, we also created um, several startups. Um, we have 10 industrial partners and 17 research projects currently, which is important for us to, um, to really come up with the right research questions, to really have support for our research, but you will see this also in the next minutes. So um, history-wise, um, I came to Dresden in October 2014 and um, took over the chair. And um, with, with that, um, we had, so to start at the 1st of October, and um, right on the same day um, here at um, TU Dresden with other professors, we launched the 5G Lab Germany. We called it 5G Lab Germany because at that time there was not so much research in, uh, on 5G at all, and especially not in Germany. So here we have now over 20 professors um, doing research in the application of 5G or really in um, improving 5G technology. Um, it's very interesting and we'll show you some of the stuff that we're doing here. Um, later, therefore, we are called Deutsche Telekom and we got um, uh, uh, financial support from the Deutsche Telekom. It was end of 2015 and since then we have a very good collaboration with them. Um, we also had um, the pleasure to be selected um, among one of the 12 digital hubs in Germany and with um, Dresden, we are responsible for enabling IoT, looking into hardware, software issues and connectivity issues for IoT. That is also um, an idea to bring the research that we do here at the university into the industry. Um, beginning of last year, um, we started the Excellence Cluster Tactile Internet. We are um, leading this um, Excellence Cluster and I'm the speaker, one of the speakers for this cluster. Um, it's a new form for communication networks that we have to build there. I also brought some slides for that. Um, we also um, create a center for um, explainable and energy efficient AI and um, have also the pleasure to have a BMBF funded project on 5G campus, which is in relation with the 5G Lab Germany, but it's one dedicated project just for small island networks. Later, a little bit more on that. And last but not least, we also um, conquer new um, grounds um, here together with the medical people on the Else Kröner Fresenius Stiftung. It's a huge project that um, also together with CETI, the Center for Tactile Internet, tries to exploit robotics in medical application fields. So these are just the names. I brought you some pictures so that you know what we are doing there. Um, in the 5G Lab Germany, um, I already said that um, we are some um, professors working together. We are writing application for research projects together. They are going from agriculture to construction um, to car manufacturers. And once a year in September, beginning of October, and we have sometimes a one day or up to three day um, workshop summit 
where people around the world gather together to de explain um, each other what they think 5G um, will be in the future, what are the application fields. If you as a student are interested to join, just um, have a look at our web pages and I think there are also for students some um, cheap, if not free, tickets. We also have then, for example, um, application fields like 5G together with energy. Um, here you see the, the world as it is currently, where you have um, a coal mine producing the, um, the energy for all the households. But in the future, we will have windmills. So there, we need new ways to um, deal with the energy if there is too little, too much. So we need batteries and batteries um, means that we have to build up um, energy clusters in a very agile way and 5G can help us here. So uh, that's very interesting field for us, 5G, because it opens the door for many application fields that we did not look in in the past. So here you see, for example, then the, the future, smaller grids um, combining each other, trying to help each other with the energy. You have batteries there. The batteries could be um, steady ones for the households, but we also can make um, use of batteries inside cars. This is the um, 5G campus networks. As you can see, this is just a mock-up currently, but this is what you see in the Backhausen Bau, um, where you also can put your hands on uh, inside the box. There's a fully blown 5G network, 5G RAN, 5G core. And um, where the guy stands here, we are building now um, demonstrations how 5G, for example, can have positive impact on automation, for example, robotics, how to teach them, etc. And this teaching part, of robotics, you can see here a nice example where the center of tactile internet comes into the picture, but also one of our startups, Vandalbots, that shows him how you teach um, robotic um, arms in the future. Um, so far, you had to program them, but here you see um, Dietz, who is the CEO of Volkswagen, who will um, just teach the robot um, a certain skill by just making it as a human being, just performing it several times, and the robot will learn and by the movement of the human body as we have um, embedded several sensors in this jacket. Now, um, this Center for Tactile Internet um, tries also to go out there and um, to teach the um, population um, about our research and explaining also young school kids what to do for that purpose. Last year we had this nice truck, the city truck, which a um, huge lab on board that was mobile so we could go to different places. Here was the Pots, uh, Potsplatz in, um, in Dresden and we also did this for Lange Nacht der Wissenschaft where we um, here in front of the Mensa invited over 2,500 people um, in only one, uh, one day. Actually, it was only um, six hours. Now, um, here you see also our team, our international team, um, trying to demonstrate how um, we really teach robots in the future. And um, there are also school kids, which was also the aim of this truck, to really engage with school kids, explaining them what they um, can do in the future, for what robotics will be good, not only industry, but also medical um, um, stuff. And here you see our more and more intelligent um, closing here by the example of a, a glove that has sensors embedded weaved here actually with some computing where the computing is really in the box over here right but these things will be um, even getting smaller and smaller and integrated into the glove the center for explainable and efficient ai technology which i mentioned before is a collaboration with Fraunhofer where we really try to gather from the TU Dresden side and Fraunhofer to um, gather the competences here on campus and try to engage with new projects. And um, last but not least, I also told you the, the a match with the medical people. Here you see Stephanie Speidel um, operating together with a robot. And um, you see already there's a lot of technology, not only the robots, but only AR, VR. And these things have now to bring bring together with wireless sensor parts. So which our part is here is the communication network. So this is some highlights um, from the last years. Um, I would like to introduce to you now the teaching part. And um, for that, um, I just brought you the, um, the teaching goals that we have. Of course, we would like to have 
and provide you with high quality teaching. I, I think everybody, every teacher should have this goal. Nevertheless, and the way how we achieve it, you will see now in the, in the next slides. Um, we have, of course, lectures and exercises. This is classical. This is asked by the models to do that. But um, we would like also to get your experience a little bit on this hands-on, which means you should be able to program your own examples. Instead of just calculating with pen and paper, sometimes it's really good to make your hands dirty and really try to, to do your own experience, your own demonstrations, right? So we think that the lectures and exercise might not be enough for your life, right? Um, so we would like to um, have also some um, other impacts and um, for this we provide some videos and podcasts which um, in the time of um, COVID really got a, a big boost. I think all of our lectures are currently uh, more or less um, available on YouTube and um, if you go to our web pages, I will show them later to you, then you see already not only the structure of the lectures, there's also a, a YouTube video that you can um, watch beforehand or um, afterwards. The thing is, when we come up to, to the students and tell them, um, please also um, try to program your own examples, most students come back with the questions, is this important for the exam? And our aim is not to train you only for the exam. Our aim is to train you for, um, for your future career. And this is by far not done with doing an, an exam. Therefore, you should ask yourself why you are really at the lecture, right? Is this necessary for me? Maybe you don't um, think there might be a better one for you with more interest, then you should do that. But once you have selected one of our lectures, um, we would like you to go all in and um, understand also the, the site project that we try to offer you, because this will be important for your career. So um, this is a figure that I took from our webpage that explains a little bit um, what we are doing and offering um, over the semesters. Um, semester 7 is missing here because most students are leaving the university to um, make their project work. but. Um, it does not mean that you only ha can do this in this semesters and whenever you would like to do that, you can of, of course do that. The lectures have some strange name like Basismodul Kommunikationsnetze. Um, for us, they have internally some names like Communication Networks 1, 2 and 3. And I would like to guide you through and show you how they depend on each other. Um, as we are Communication Network uh, Chair, of course, um, the basic module is Communication Networks 1. And um, if you go to our webpage, here you have a QR code if you want to go there. Um, then you will find uh, somehow a structure. This is the structure of um, this semester where we say there are some lectures and then there are some exercises. Um, normally we would interleave them, but um, as we had and this corona stuff we started with all lectures and are now doing the exercises all lectures for example here are on youtube there's a, um, a button you can just click on it we made it public available um, just to maybe give also other people the chance to to watch them if you have any feedback on them we would um, like to hear that how we can improve it maybe what is missing what we should add and on the exercise, we mix it a little bit. We have um, also YouTube videos where we give out um, the task beforehand and then show you the solution. Sometimes we have live sessions where um, you can really try to, um, to work um, on um, doing your programming skills, how we do that. And we show you also um, by another lecture in a minute. Good. Um, then in the eighth semester, we have Aufbau. Modul Kommunikationsnetze, which is Comnet uh, 2 for us. Actually, the topic that we are now doing here uh, this semester, the first time, was um, coming from the th um, Comnet 3. So Comnet 3 was always the idea to pro um, provide the students with new techniques, something that is a little bit risky. But um, nowadays, what we're doing in Comnet 2 is what we call softwareization. So in Comnet 1, we talk about um, classical communication skills like um, layered protocol design, the ESO OSI model, and this is more or less the old world. It's an end to end world. While in Comnets 2, we already look into the future of communication network that are currently, is currently implemented. 
where we have computing within the network. So you can say these are the smart networks. The old networks were a little bit dumb because they just could convey information from A to B. Here we think about communication networks that also um, embed uh, storage and computing, for example. And here we have um, a very um, good situation currently because we have not only the videos for all of the, the lectures and the hand-on sessions, um, I, there are more hand-on sessions than these two, and um, currently I just brought the one that I um, uploaded. Um, we have also a script because a lot of students ask for it. We, together with um, LCV, we made um, a book where all our PhD students worked on it. It's 27 chapters and we can use this as a script nowadays. It's very um, convenient for students and also for us. This means you can um, have a look into that and the book itself is centered about the um, first part is more or less about the um, technologies and then we have our own communication um, emulator where you can really um, program your own examples and we guide you through how to use this emulator and how to make your own examples with new technologies that you learn in other lectures. So, for example, one of the new technologies that we are looking in is a network coding. Um, as I said before, networks are not end-to-end -end anymore, where you have an encoder and a decoder. Here you have the in-network coding. And there are new features in that. Also here um, we have some videos. If you want to have a glimpse into that, just go there, look into the stuff. We have, um, I think, quite some good material here, which is also coming from the IEEE tutorials that we are giving together with MIT people all the time. So um, here we are actually working also on a script that will come out um, pretty soon, um, but it's not ready yet. Um, here also an example how we do um, the coding. We do this with Jupyter Notebooks. You can even do this everything offline on your machine. But in order to give everybody a quick access to it, um, we use Python language inside a web browser where you can just um, log in and um, see some um, pre-featured um, code. So you can just run the code, see the plots that are coming out here, change the code as you want in the web browser, and for that, um, we expect people to have a little bit of skills of Python, which we already introduced in Comnets 1, for example. And network coding is a really nice um, technology that we then can embed, for example, in Comnets 2 as one of the new features that we would like to build in communication networks. Another thing equal to network coding is cooperative communication. Actually, the cooperative communication um, started the need for network coding. So and in order to make this efficient, you will need network coding. So these two things um, work together well, pretty well. So um, if you go for one of them, maybe you choose also the other one. And not surprisingly, also here we have our YouTube videos and um, we have a bunch of books in this area, which are not serving as a script, but we are taking out a lot of content out of the four books that I was involved in, um, from corporation to cognitive, mobile clouds, mobile peer-to-peer -peer networks. Some of them are oriented more in the implementation, some are more into the concepts, and therefore um, these will be the sources. But you don't have to read all of the books. We will bring you the content in the slides. Then uh, Vertiefungsmodul Kommunikationsnetz is for us Comnet 3. Th this is currently um, re is redesigned because, um, as I told you before, whatever was here moved to Comnet 2 now. And here we think about new um, ideas like quantum networking, molecular communication, ultra re um, uh, resilient and low latency communication for automation or the tactile internet. Currently, we are building up this curriculum and soon it will be up, um, uploaded to our web pages and then you can see it there. A basic thing um, is the two um, semester um, class of statistics. And I can only tell you that you should really um, look into that. Um, that's very uh, important um, for all of the lectures, not only for us, but understanding statistics is a must for an engineer. There are two um, two classes over here um, I just brought you some examples. We are currently trying to move some of the content into uh, the Jupyter Notepad, as you've seen before, so that you can also see some 
effects and running code um, that is also interesting currently and we will also perform some of the um, things in uh, with video as you can see there are other things um, still um, open i will not go into into detail there over seminar is where you can listen into some talks and also make a small mini project um, we are also um, exporting our knowledge to, um, to other uh, disciplines. Um, as I said, the smart grid communication, what we uh, is before, is now very interesting for us. Um, Mikro Rechner Technik, um, we also use these kind of platforms for our own demonstrations a lot. And um, therefore, we are exporting that to many things already now. Okay. Now, the teaching. Um, is currently, or if you will see it over the years, um, always updated with outcomes of our research. We believe that this is good for us as a teacher because um, it keeps us always um, agile and on alert to make um, new things for the lectures. But it's also nice to really um, convey you with the newest research results. So in order to tell you what we are doing, it's very broad. But on the other end, um, I try to uh, show you a little bit um, the, the pillows we are lying on. So software is one part of this. Connectivity, wireless, wired is something interesting for us. Not only radio, also optical is interesting for us currently. And we are also looking into hardware issues. And that gives you let's say, three main fields where the research takes place. A big pillow is softwareization in communication networks. That what um, the Comnets uh, 2 lecture is all about, where we think about software-defined networks, network function virtualization, or information-centric networks. All these three will change the internet as it is now in a dramatic way. Then, in order to um, use this kind of flexibility that we create with softwareization, we have some information theory um, questions that we have. Uh, network coding, um, was one lecture alone, compressed sensing um, is part of um, other um, lectures currently, machine learning, post-channel quantum networks, all of topics that are unique topics that then can be tested in actual networks by using the softwareization. Post-channel, for example, um, is the question whether we can have capacities that are larger than what Channel tells us. Um, most people will say you can never go um, beyond this Shannon limit, but Shannon only told us uh, about the capacity that is uh, on a channel um, when we transmit information. But there are different questions that you can ask yourself. It's not only what you transmit, maybe also how you transmit something or whether somebody transmitted at all. And if you look into this kind of capacity, there's something um, you can achieve Normally, in, in Shannon, you will have an exponential um, capacity increase with the, with the bandwidth. Now we are talking about double um, exponential here. And then we also look into different application fields. Um, mesh networks are interesting for us. Wireless mesh even more, in, more, even more because here we have all the cooperative questions in it, right? Communication and control, whether it's in automotive, industry, energy, big um, application field and even the tactile internet. Good. So if you now look into the different um, disciplines and if you look into the different application fields, then you find out different um, questions that we are working on. Um, for example, down here in information theory, we would like to understand how can we make networks resilient? How can we make them low latency? How we can bring in security? And um, different application fields have different focuses areas on that. On the communication architecture, um, everybody, when we talk about 5G, thinks about this big nationwide 5G. But I told you before, there's also something called campus solution. What can we contribute in this area, for example? right? And um, what we can do is to come up with new virtualization ideas of network slicing, mobile edge cloud, service chaining, and bring them into the two network types over here. Good. So when you think about our re research methodology, we have something that we call um, theory that matters. There's one video um, that where I explain this in a uh, very detailed way. Well, here I just want to um, show you what we mean by theory that matters. Um, 
we believe that two things are important, theory as well as implementation or application. If it comes to application and implementation, most universities will tell you, ah, this is not for us, we do the high-end theory, but um, as you will see later, we think it's a dualism. You need both of them because the interplay be because of from both of them creates our substantial research questions. And the first step is always to learn about theory, to look into the new direction. Network coding is something like this. Compressed sensing is something like this. Post channel is something like this. So there is a theory. And once you understand it, you would like to implement it. Why are you doing it? Just to show feasibility. That's not it. That um, is nice sometimes, but you don't get any credit for that, right? But if you implement it and you get a feedback, something like it does not work, which most people would uh, say it's a bad thing for us. If we implement something and it does not work, the question is, why does it not work? And out of this question, why does it not work? You get a new research question and you're back on the whiteboard. You're back looking into the theory. And for us, there's nothing better than theory that works. And there's a, a more detailed picture on that. And um, what you see here is really the dualism, the interplay theory and implementation. The top part is the fundamental research, which consists out of theory, concept, mathematical analysis, modeling. And down here is the implementation. And the implementation it can be different things. Some people just do simulations, others do already software in the loop, others have hardware in the loop where software is also embedded, so that's always the next step. And the last and the best thing is the test bed, right? Sometimes we call it human in the loop. And what you do here is first is always the fundamental research. You come up with the right questions. Then you would like to find the algorithm protocols, some parameterization, and you implement it. And then the, sometimes there are different people doing this. And then the people down here, they will have optimization loops that we call it inner selection loops, which means if you do a simulation, you see it's not going well. Maybe the parameterization was not good. Then if you find out that was good, but the, um, it is still not give you the, um, the stuff you would like, maybe the algorithm protocols should be changed. And then you can do this all over the time, over and over again, until you come maybe to the point it does not work for you. And then you go back to the whiteboard, as I said, and think about fundamental research. Here's the example how we did this with network coding. There were a lot of good questions that came out of, of this interplay. And once you have this interplay um, in full speed, exploitation, for example, publication, patents, teaching, um, even startups, is very easy once you have this uh, loop running. Good, um, just an example here. Um, if you do simulations, this is an example we had um, for um, a simulation for cooperative networks, right? And we find out uh, what kind of energy gains you can have once you um, have the right protocols in place. And that's quite interesting. But it, the, what you also would like to see is maybe a more advanced implementation, test beds, for example, right? You see here our humanoid robots, Mr. T. We have cars going over an intersection, which we presented on a mobile uh, world conference in 2016. Um, we also have not only machines in place, we also interact with humans. So these are our kind of test beds that we built, right? This is what we call the end game. Once you have something like this in place, you can either stop the research because you said it's done right now, or you derive new research questions from that. And believe me, um, all the three things that you see right here, even though they were, have been already um, demonstrated 2016, are still out there as one of our um, demonstrators and source for good research questions. Last but not least, um, we have um, collaboration. I told you already a little bit about this. We have industry collaboration. Um, also not only Deutsche Telekom, we have Bosch, Nokia, Ericsson, BMW, D6, um, Audi, Volkswagen, Telemotive, HP, um, as the Grüner Fresenius Zentrum. So they not only financially support our PhDs, they also come up with very good research questions. They challenge us on a daily basis. We have um, public funding um, from the German government, from the EU, and we have also a lot of um, collaboration with other universities, mainly with MIT, um, Arizona State University, Budapest and Aalborg. So if you have questions how you can go to these places, just come to us 
and um, we might be helpful and give you the right contact information. With that, um, I would like to thank you for listening in. I hope that you find it very interesting what I have presented to you and I made the chair a little bit more interesting. Have a look at our web pages. There's more information and um, I would be really happy to see you around either in a real presentation lecture face to face or as a student for, our, for your thesis um, as a student or a master. Thank you very much.